Greetings again and welcome back to the CS2 sticker creation tutorial. In the previous video, we created the paper version of our sticker by preparing the albedo and alpha mask files. In this video, we will create the hollow version of the same sticker. If you still haven't watched the first part, then please do so because in this video, we will build on what we did there. So what are holographic stickers? These stickers change colors according to the angle and lighting in which the stickers are viewed. You can also add patterns to the hollow effect so that the colors will change in cool and interesting ways. There is so much room for creativity when it comes to creating hollow stickers, that's why it's a lot of fun to create them. In order to make hollow stickers, we need to make 4 files. An albedo image, an alpha mask, a hollow mask, and a color spectrum. As I said in the beginning, I already covered the albedo and alpha mask in the first video. The hollow mask file is responsible for deciding which areas of the sticker become holographic and which ones keep the colors of the albedo image. It's also in this file where we add patterns and control the colors of the hollow effect. The color spectrum file contains the set of colors that will appear in the hollow effect. All files should be exported to TGA format. Let's start by taking a look at the albedo texture. I want the eyes of the agent, as well as the sky, but without the clouds, to have the holographic effect, and we'll leave the rest as it is. So the sky and eyes will change colors, and the head and body of the agent, as well as the crosshair, the ground, and the boxes will remain the same. In addition, I want the colors of the eyes to be different than the colors that the sky will get. So let's start by creating our spectrum file to see which colors we will add. So as I said, I will assign two different sets of colors to the eyes and the sky. Therefore, I will create two areas in the image and each will contain a different gradient. By the way, the resolution of the image is not important. So I'll start with the first gradient, which will be assigned to the sky. In order to access the list of gradients in Krita, you click here. You can either choose one of the ready gradients or you can create a custom one by clicking on Add. The gradient panel is quite straightforward. You add new colors by clicking on the gradient. You can change the colors by choosing the pointers and clicking on this button here. And when you're done, give the gradient name and click OK. I have my gradients already prepared to save time. For the sky, I will go with this gradient. I click on it, then on the left side I'll choose the gradient tool, then on the right side I'll make sure that the shape is set to linear and then draw the colors. Now might be a good time to share a small tip. For the spectrum of holo stickers, I like to start and end the gradients with the same colors. This will make the effect look seamless when moving the sticker around. Ok, moving on to the eyes gradient. I'll create a new layer on top of the current one and I'll create a rectangle selection at the bottom of the layer. I'll fill it with the colors that will serve as the spectrum of the eyes. As we did before, I'll choose my gradient and then apply it inside the selected area. When you're done, export the image as a TGA file by going to File, Export, and in the Save As Type, choose TGA Image. Now we can move on to the hollow mask. Again, this is the mask in which we'll specify which areas are holographic and which will keep the original parts of the albedo image. And here we'll control how to use the spectrum colors. I've copied the albedo texture Krita file and renamed it to hollow mask as a starting point. I'll create a group for the current layers by selecting all of them using shift and left mouse button. Then right click on any layer and choose quick group and we'll rename the group as albedo. Every image in the world is composed of three color channels, red, green and blue channels. In the hollow mask, each of these channels has a certain role to play. Let's start with the red channel. This channel is responsible for deciding which areas are holographic and which will maintain the original colors of the albedo texture. If we color an area in the red channel with white, then we tell the sticker that this part will be hollow, and if we color it with black, then that means this part maintains the original image. With that in mind, let's create a new layer where we'll add the red channel values. I'll rename the layer as red and drag the layer outside the albedo group and I'll add it to a group of its own called Mask. Before we start editing the layer, we will need to set it to contain only the red channel. 
We can do so by going to the layer properties which can be found either by right clicking the layer or by pressing on this button here. Disable the blue and green channels and keep the red and the alpha ones only. Ok now we can begin. I'll start from the bottom and go up through the albedo layers. So starting with the background layer let's select the sky without the clouds. Using the color selection tool I'll select the colors of the sky while pressing shift in order to add to the selection. Now I'll go back to my newly created layer and fill the selected area with white because I want this area to be hollow. And what do we get? We get red instead of white. And that's because we're only working with the red channel, so it's perfectly fine. Moving on to the T agent. I want his body and head to be black because I don't want that part of the sticker to be hollow. So besides the eyes, which I want to be hollow, I'll merge all the agent's layers into one. Again I'll use the color selection tool but this time I'll select outside the agent's area and invert the selection by pressing Ctrl Shift I. Now I'll go back to the red layer and fill the selected area with black. Very similar to what we did so far I'll do the white areas of the eyes. Go to the eyes layer, select the white area, go back to the red layer change the color to white and fill the selection. And finally I'll paint the crosshair black using the same method. We are left with the transparent areas, which we'll color black by creating a new layer under the red one and fill it with black. It's very important to remember to disable the blue and green channels of the new black layer. Now we can merge the two together and now our red channel is ready. Moving on to the green channel. The green channel defines how the hollow effect of the sticker moves along the horizontal axis of the color spectrum. This is also where we'll add the pattern to the hollow effect. So let's start by creating a new layer under the mask group, rename the layer to green and then go to layer properties where this time I'll set the channel to green. All the black areas in the red channel will also be black in the green one because these areas will not have the hollow effect. So I'll go to the red layer and with the color selection tool I'll select the black areas. Now let's go back to the green layer and fill the selection with black. Next I want to add a pattern for the sky area and for that I'll be using this diamond shape pattern. So I'll drag and drop the pattern image into the Krita session and place it above the green layer. I'll hide the pattern layer for a moment so that we can see what's happening. With the green layer chosen and using the color selection tool I'll select the black areas. Then with the rectangle selection tool I'll press shift and drag to cover the eyes area in order to include that area. Now we go back to the pattern layer. I have all the unwanted areas of the pattern selected so I'll press the delete button to remove them. Go to the layer properties of the pattern and set it to the green channel. Then we merge it with the green layer. Now I'll give the eyes a shaped gradient pattern. For that I'll select the transparent areas of the eye, go to the gradient tool and make sure the shape is set to shaped. Then I'll select a medium gray as the foreground color and white as the background color. Make sure that the gradient is set to foreground to background and drag. And now my green layer is ready. By the way, notice that if I enable the red layer, the color of the image changes. That's because the red channel in the green layer is empty. So the images combine with each other and create new colors, which is totally fine. Ok, off to the blue channel. Remember how I said that the green channel controls the movement of the hollow effect in the horizontal axis? The blue channel does the same thing but for the vertical axis. So using the blue channel we can specify which colors of the color spectrum appear in a given area in the mask. That's how the sticker will know that the sky and eye colors should be assigned to the sky and eyes respectively. Now how do we actually do that? We do it by assigning the proper gray colors to every hollow area. So how does this work? Let's go back to the color spectrum for a moment. The lighter the gray color we choose for a specific area in the blue channel is, 
the lower the color chosen from the spectrum will be. So this means that when I want to choose the lower gradient I'll have to use a light to medium gray color and when I want to choose the upper gradient I'll use a dark gray close to black. Back to our mask, let's create a new layer under the mask group and call it blue. And of course don't forget to set the only active channel to be blue. As we did with the previous layers, the black areas are assigned black color. For the sky area, I want the upper gradient from the spectrum, so I'll go with some dark gray, something like this one. And as I did earlier, I'll include the eyes in the selection and invert using Ctrl Shift I to have the selection set to the sky area. And now I can fill the area with the color we chose. And finally, for the beautiful eyes of our handsome terrorist, I'll assign a light gray color like this one. Select the transparent areas using the color selection tool and fill with the fill tool. Now that we have colored everything, let's show the three layers together. And now we have our holo mask ready. All that is left to do is to export it. And as usual, the format of the exported image should be TGA. So now we have our albedo, wear mask, color spectrum and holo mask files ready so let's go to the workshop item editor so that we reap what we have sown. In the workshop item editor I'll create a new entry by creating a copy of the paper sticker we created in the last video. This way I get to keep all the wear settings and the albedo and wear mask images. I'll change the name of the entry to target locked holo. And we'll change the style from paper to holographic. And now we see two new fields added to the settings. One for the holo mask and one for the spectrum. I've already uploaded the files to the correct path as we did in the previous video. So all I need to do now is choose the missing images and hit inspect. And here's our perfect sticker in action. Actually, it's not perfect, it's not even good, but it does the job of portraying the sticker creation process. Anyway, as we can see, the holo mask is doing its job by preserving everything besides the sky and eyes. We can also see the two different patterns for the two holo areas and how each area has its colors. Also note that when the sticker wears, the effect in the remaining holo areas is preserved. So that's it for the holo stickers. In the next video, I'll be discussing the lenticular stickers. But until then, make sure you understand the contents of this video, otherwise you won't understand much of the coming video. Also until then, take care and see you soon.